Well, hello, everybody. Welcome to Friday. It's good to see all of you. I am, um, I'm here in Fratella, Italy, which is about 30 minutes outside of Rome. And uh, it's getting to be oh, nighttime. We just finished one of our major rains here. Um, tomorrow I leave for England. I only have seven days left and I get to come home after being away for six weeks. So it, it'll be kind of nice. Um, today we have Emma and Emma's um, from actually Washington State. So it's great to see Emma here from Washington State. Yeah. She goes to school in Iowa. She is the youngest artist we've ever had on live. So that's pretty awesome. Uh, hopefully that's a, a, a trend that we mix in on a go forward basis. So Emma, welcome. Thank you. It's good to be yeah. here. You're so welcome. And could you pronounce your last name for us, please? My last name is Vandevort. Vandevort, okay, fantastic. Okay, so we're gonna see a PowerPoint presentation from Emma. And then we'll go ahead and uh, be uh, watch a demonstration, which will be phenomenal. Yay. Yeah, we'll do this uh, screen share. Mm -hmm. okay, and everyone, please pay, pay attention to Emma's um, handle in Instagram. That's Louis the Dog Studio. I suppose Louis is your dog, Emma. <laughs> yes. Lewis was my first dog. <laughs> and is that Lewis in your profile picture? That is, that is Lewis. Oh, beautiful dog. And she's, of course, on Facebook. This is her page. And the next couple of slides, Emma uh, has, uh, have your sample artworks. It'd be good to, if you could share a line or two for each of these artworks. Uh, we start with this. This is part of my collection of the national parks. I started painting, um, I think the first one I painted was Yellowstone right when uh, COVID began and I was stuck at home for hours during online school. I just decided to paint it instead. Um, so I started with Yellowstone and then decided I'd just start painting all of them. So this is partway through the journey of all 63 national parks that took about two years to complete, but this is probably little, maybe half the collection, so. Very nice. This was a painting I did uh, last summer, no, two summers ago. This is North Cascades National Park, which was taken on a hike probably an hour from where I live. This is a place that I've always grown up in and called home by Mount Baker. Um, it was one of my first bigger landscape paintings. It's a nine by 12, I believe. And just had a lot of fun putting detail into it. This is one I did this past summer, a year ago. Um, we're surrounded by barn swallows and all kinds of wildlife at our home. And I just love birds. So this is a 12 by 16 painting I did as I'm kind of getting into the world of scientific illustration. This is a painting, another 12 by 16, I did for my high school biology teacher, actually. She kind of instilled a love for both science and art in me and was the, kind of the one that pushed me to see how I could combine the two. Um, I'm studying biology in college, as well as art, wh where I can fit it in. And she, commissioned me to do this and she said she wanted DNA with life coming out of it. So that's where I started and it just kind of evolved into this rather quickly. I think I painted it in about two days. This was another scientific illustration I did um, last fall or late summer, just of a dandelion. I started to get into the more dissection style scientific illustrations. That one was a lot of fun. This is Glacier National Park. Um, one of the national parks paintings that I did, they're all four by four inch little tiny paintings. Um, this is one of the best sellers. It's also one of the most famous national parks, so it makes sense. Um, 
but yeah, this picture just shows a little bit more of the tiny detail. I use lots of small brushes when I do these. And this is a collection of trees that I did, just started as a simple sketch on some scratch paper, that tall, skinny one. And um, these are all trees that are native to Northwest Washington. So it's a Sitka spruce, Western hemlock, Western red cedar, and I can't remember the other one. Noble spruce, maybe? This the last image we have in here. Mm -hmm. Those are beautiful. So, Emma, when you're doing your demonstration today, do you want people to ask you questions as you're doing it, or you want to wait to the end? Either way works, honestly. Okay. So, yeah. if you're on Zoom, you'll be able to ask Emma directly, and if you're on Facebook, someone is going to um, bring your your question over to Emma. All right. So, with that, Emma, if you'd like to begin, that'd be fantastic. I want to give you as much time as possible. Okay. Sounds good. I'll have to flip my camera around. There was a question by one of the viewers asking the um, uh, draw the uh, art of the no of the parks. Did you go to the parks and do those, or were those from books? Um, some of them. I've been to some of them, but not all of them. I it's my goal to go to all of them eventually. So mm -hmm. I did have to rely on. Some photographs that I had taken on my own and some from friends that had traveled places. And then for all the parks that I didn't know people that had gone to or hadn't been to myself, I looked up lots of pictures online and kind of found the most iconic views and then painted them how I wanted. If I felt like painting a sunset that day, I painted it as a sunset. And I really just didn't think too much about it which is probably the beauty of it. They're just these tiny little paintings and could kind of just go whatever direction with the different parks that I wanted. So, awesome. yeah. This is a picture that I took um, on a hike last summer in North Cascades National Park. I've never painted it before, but I figured I'd give it a shot today. Um, it's one of the most beautiful places and yeah little mix of landscape and trees so figured it would be fun this is my full collection of paints i think i have about 40 so Hello, Emma. This is Ian Hello. in the UK. Um, your paper, is there a particular type that you like to use for your style? Certain paper, is that what you said? Yes. Um, yeah, I use pretty much all Arches cold press paper. I bought a very large roll of it for a large scale commission one year and seemingly now have an endless supply of it. So it's most of what I use, but I have found that it is my favorite paper as well. It holds up to lots of layers of paint and allows me to lift colors if I make a mistake. And yeah, I like the texture and how it looks too. Do you, do you go for a rough or a smooth texture? Uh, I like rough, rough texture better. Right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Emma, this is Mindy from Annapolis. Hi. Hi. I was wondering if you do a value study before you jump into painting. Um, yeah, that's. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Yeah. Um, sometimes I do and sometimes I don't. Often, if it's a very large scale painting or a commission for someone um, and they have very specific requests, then I do. Um, I'll kind of give them like my color palette, what I envision. Um, or if I get some new paints, then I'll 
test them out before I just slap them on some paper. But honestly, I probably wing it more than I plan it out. <laughs> so um, yeah, I kind of like the challenge of just doing it and then having to creatively fix my mistakes rather than overthinking it too much. That's something I've learned over time though. I haven't always been that way. I definitely used to be much more of a perfectionist and do lots of practice thumbnails and obsess over details. Now I tend to start with a much rougher um, sketch or no sketch at all. And then this had a very light sketch and then just go from there. Okay, great. Thank you. I appreciate yeah. that. Of course. Hey, Emma. Hello. I'm Stephanie from Germany. Uh, uh, you, your park pictures look off, awesome. Um, and I've ha I have a question about them since they are pretty small. Um, and you did a lot of work uh, from photos. Um, did you use um, easier scenes or not as detailed scenes? Or did you, uh, did you abstract your, your scenes? Uh, how, did you, how did you work with that? Um, for some, I, I don't know, it's some of them I picked pretty simple reference photos and then uh, added my own details as I went. And some of them I very much stuck to the details that were in the reference photos. Um, is that what does that answer your question? Yes, thank you. <laughs> yeah, of course. I've tended to, now I've started to move a little bit towards larger scale paintings just because they, people have a little bit more of an interest in them I found. And I like being able to print, get prints of them at larger sizes too. But I still love doing those small paintings as well. Yeah, a lot, larger sizes are a lot better for printing and for selling. No? <laughs> yes, yeah. <laughs> Hey Emma, this is Gabriel. You have a question over on Facebook. And on Facebook, you have people watching from Germany, Alaska, Poland, Rome, and the Philippines. And the question was, what colors have you used so far? So far, I have been using sap green and hooker's green. There are some more recent ones that I got probably a year ago. And they're my favorite vibrant greens for all of this foliage. Um, then in the path, I used Van Dyke Brown, a little bit of Bloodstone Genuine, and Lunar Blue. They all do a lot of texture on their own, which I really like for these nature paintings. Kind of does some of the detail work for me, which is kind of cool. Emma. Hello. Um, without being patronizing in any way, uh, how have you been able to get to uh, the point of having such a highly styled uh, way of painting uh, at your young age? Because it takes people many, many years to get to a, a, a style like what you were showing and, and how would you define um sorry i think it cut out for a minute hopefully yeah. this is still um i have probably been using watercolor for like four years now and kind of coming up with a style took probably the last two years or since three mm. years, maybe since COVID. Um, and honestly, just a lot of time. I, even though I'm only 20 years old and have only been painting with watercolor for a couple of years, it's, I have put a lot of time into it, much less since I've been in college, just because life has been a lot busier, but um, yeah, just doing lots of small paintings and 
lots of commissions that have pushed me to do things like portraits and animals and landscapes. I've just been able to discover what I like painting the most and then spent my time doing that. And then, yeah, I am mostly self-taught. I haven't done much in terms of art classes. I did some drawing lessons when I was really young, like probably seven or eight with a local artist. Um, that was a lot of fun. And I just got exposed to lots of different materials and medias. But since then, I've just been exploring things on my own, which has been its own challenge for sure. But that's how I've kind of discovered my niche. Right. Well, that's good because it's, it's good to have a, a personal uh, angle from your own. Yeah, definitely. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Hi, Emma. This is Rajat here from India. I have noticed one thing that you have started your work from the bottom. Mm -hmm. So normally that's the process you do or it depends on the subject? Um, it depends. It kind of depends on the focal point of the painting. I do often right. start. Okay. Um, I appreciate that. That's yeah. Thing. And another another thing I must ask you that is is this the water pot normally you use um this much water or do you use much? Uh, normally this is this is the water you use. Is this your um, water pot normally? Yeah, this is about what I my normal um, stages of a landscape painting. I start with a very light wash and get all the colors down, and then, uh -huh. um go into a lot more of the detail as the shapes progress. So right. I like to cover as much of the white paper as I can with at least like some color of something before I go in with detail. And that's something that I've gotten more comfortable with over the years. Right. So, I appreciate that. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. I think you is referring to your jam jar. Uh, how small it is. Uh, oh. Yeah, this is my, Jeff. I think it was a dollar somewhere and I thought it was adorable, so. And are you painting oh. flat? Yes, I am. Do you always paint flat? I do. Okay. Yeah. I've spilled enough water jars to decide that a small one was probably the best idea. <laughs> uh, Posture-wise, uh, are you a stander up uh, or uh, a seated down? Uh, I always sit down when I paint. Uh, I've been, although I want to get like a stand up, sit down, like one of those desks that goes up and down, but I have not. Mm -hmm been able to do that yet um typically I sit down and then just have to get up and move around every once in a while because before I know it I'll have sat here for an hour and my back gets pretty stiff but for larger scale paintings I do end up standing up actually just so I can get a better view of everything that I'm doing but I still have the painting flat then too With the level of detail that you have in your paintings, uh, there's obviously lots of layers in that. Mm -hmm. So what would be a typical amount of layers that you would put into a painting? Typically, probably about three, um, yeah. three to four. And some, I usually leave some parts of the painting at only 
one or two layers. Yeah. And then some parts I'll keep working on for hours. Like paintings like this, I'd probably like these trees, I'll put a fair amount of detail in in the uh, middle and then towards the edges um, with the bigger, bigger pieces, I typically do a little less detail and less layers than two. Emma, I noticed you have some other uh, brushes or items in the other jar. Uh, do you use mm -hmm. other tools other than brushes? I don't typically. I do have a paper towel here. I usually keep one of these around um, and mostly use that for the sky, actually, if I am doing clouds um, or just to lift some paint off if I spill some or anything like that. Other than that, I pretty much only use brushes. I have a couple of these small silicone brushes that I use for applying masking fluid if I ever use it, um, which I usually don't because I get impatient with it. Um, but every once in a while, it comes in handy for some of the details like in mountains or um, trees or just like a complicated foreground if I want to just wash out the background and get that done first. Emma, uh, we got a direct message from BJ. Two questions. Uh, one is for color. The colors that you, you apply on the trunk now, is that uh, Van Dyke or which color is it? Um, this is Van Dyke and a little bit of Bloodstone Genuine. Mm -hmm. And the hint of blue in the middle is Lunar Blue. Thank you. I don't know if you can see in the video, but it's beginning to granulate and show some interesting textures, which I was hoping for. We see that. Thank you. And the... Yes. Um, do you encourage granulation in, in your uh, paintings? Is it something you look for and want to happen? Uh, I generally do, yeah. It was something that I didn't know much about when I bought my first paints. Um, I kind of jumped straight into buying professional grade paints because I got this like gift card to an art store after um, a uh, contest that I entered in high school. Um, and I was like, I don't know what paints to buy, but I need to get higher quality paints. So I bought some Daniel Smith ones and noticed that they did all of these really cool granulation things. So something I wasn't looking for at first. Um, but now I do use it to my advantage for sure. And it has affected like which paints I choose to use. Right. They're especially helpful in landscape paintings. I tend to avoid them for um, any portraits or more detailed, yeah, mostly portraits, honestly. Believe me, you've, you've uh, avoided many years of hurt by not going for lower quality paints. It was, it was a big jump for sure, but there is no going back after that, so. It is one of my biggest tips towards other young artists that are starting out is to get some high quality paints because it makes a huge, huge difference. And if it wouldn't have been for that um, art show I was a part of and the money I was able to win from that, like there's no way I would have afforded just like my 16 year old self to go out and buy like my first 15 tubes of paint, I wouldn't have just been able to do that. But um, yeah, since then I've been able to explore the paint world a lot more, which has been really fun. And now my collection has grown quite a lot. So Emma, with regards to lots of color, 
Are you a person that likes to put lot deliberately lots of colour into your painting, or or do you prefer to try and limit your palette on, on the actual uh, painting itself? I usually prefer to do lots of color. I lean towards more color as opposed to a limited palette. I just like the variety that it brings and I want it to reflect the beauty of nature. And especially in a place like this is where I grew up is this beautiful landscape like this. And it's so special to me. And just the colors that you see in person are so vibrant and so diverse. So I do like to do that with my paintings as well, to reflect that. Well, you have more followers uh, from Texas and San Diego and uh, more from Germany that are watching on Facebook. And there was a cool little share on here. It says uh, Buffy uh, Kaufman said she uh, liked your share about recycling your money made from your materials and your art that uh, that helps her along her journey as well. Yeah, well, that's awesome. Hey, Emma. Ashley here. Can you hear me okay? Yes, I can. Thank you. Um, I follow you on Instagram. Love it. I think I've been following you since 2020. Um, I have a question. Do you have a sketchbook practice that you maintain? Oh boy. Um, sometimes. <laughs> um, I tend to, during the school year, I am pretty busy and quite often don't have time to pull out all my paints and sit down and paint. Um, also, the only place I could paint was in my dorm room, unless I packed up all my stuff and went somewhere. So often I would just, yeah, sit with my sketchbook. I'd keep it in my backpack. Um, I had like a nine by 12 sized sketchbook. And I would just sketch random, really random things. Often it was animals or trees or stuff I was learning in my um, biology classes. I was in ecology first semester this year, so I spent time sketching while we were out on lab. Um, if we'd have some downtime, I'd sketch the landscape we were looking at. Uh, and then during my zoology class, my sketchbook routine was drawing all of the dissections that I was being quizzed on each week. So for a while, my sketchbook routine relied heavily on just drawing what I was seeing and studying and learning about. Um, now it's a little more like I'll sit and sketch while I watch TV or chat with my family or do things like that. But other than that, it's pretty random. I have many sketchbooks that need to be filled yet. So yeah, that's a good question. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Hello, Emma. Hello. Uh, just don't subject to what you've been talking about there about uh, sketching the biological things. Have you ever looked at um, what we call Leonardo da Vinci's 
drawings of human, but they're fantastic. Yes, yeah, that is, he has always been a very, pretty big inspiration to me in that regard. And just the yeah. world of scientific illustration was really started by him, so. Really, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, is that something cool. that you would like to uh, go into at some point? Yeah, that is actually my main um, career goal right now is to get my finish my degree in biology. I have another two years of university left and um, hopefully mm -hmm. work in some research positions in wildlife biology or plant biology and hopefully work as an illustrator for different research projects and textbooks. Mm -hmm. That's my dream anyway. We'll see um, just where I end up and what happens as I go. I'm not, don't have a direct exact plan figured out, but yeah, just kind of see. Lots, how are, opening, lots are opening out. So. Yes. So Emma, there's a question. Do you consider yourself a miniaturist artist and illustrator? I typically don't think of myself as one. No, I guess I could, but. <laughs> and what brand of brushes do you have that are you using? And what's beside you there? They look like uh, maybe Princeton. Yeah, these are all Princeton Velvet Touch brushes. This one is a Neptune. Um, it's pretty much exclusively what I use now. I have a few other like random ones that I got at craft stores and stuff, but I mo got most of these on Blick because they were pretty affordable and yeah, lots of variety in sizes and shapes. I use mostly, this is a size six flat shader, but I use lots of round brushes. And I usually just like pick up a brush and use it for a while and then forget that I'm using it and just use it for like half the painting. So, I did that just the other day. I painted an entire bouquet the size of this painting with this tiny brush just because I got lost in what I was doing. But yeah, these are really great brushes. One thing I notice about your painting is you don't seem to do a lot of mixing of colors on a palette. You just take them straight and maybe dilute them. Um, do you, is there a reason for that or you just like that better? Just the straight colors without mixing them together to get another color? Yeah, I, um, uh, I do a little I bit of both. Yeah, I noticed that's a big difference. Most people seem to have a little side mixing area that they kind of yeah, go to. I, I do have a little bit in here, which is off screen, but um, mostly for the greens. I do end up mixing. That's where I dilute them, and then they usually end up mixing together, too. Um, I'd say sometimes I mix a lot more than others for my landscapes and all the shades of greens and browns, I definitely mix a lot, um, but it's more just as I go. Like I'll mix them on, I'll swirl them around a little on a palette, but then just mix them straight on the paper too and layer them on top of each other. Um, yeah. So. yeah, okay. Yeah. I guess maybe I couldn't see it because it was in the screen. Yeah. <laughs> that you are mixing. <laughs> I'm mixing a little bit, not a ton, but... <laughs> Just a little bit. We have, we have a brand ambassador, uh, Carrie Waller, who's amazing and paints just like you're doing as well. 
uh, where I also see that you're doing some painting wet into wet, especially with those trees. And yeah. so uh, keep painting on. You're doing great. <laughs> Thank you. This is the first time I've painted at like real time speed for a video and live and everything. So it's a little nerve wracking, but it's fun. Other times I've just had people looking over my shoulder and this is better than that, definitely. Like, sorry, it's going. Oh, it's usually like classmates or people at school. So not typically other artists. This is definitely a different experience and so cool. So uh, do you know- Ben Tell, it's looking really nice. Yeah. Thank you. Society, an American Society of Botanical illustrators and they have a book on how to do it i think it's like 32 dollars, but i got it on sale and you can join the botanical the uh, the society i think which i think is like 95 dollars a year and they send out magazines with people's oh, wow. illustrations um it's a very nice looking magazine it's not huge but what's it that is amazing yeah I'll have to look into that, definitely. Well, if I can find out what I did with the book, I'll tell you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That would be awesome. You have a Facebook question. Someone came a little late and I answered their question about your reference photos, but they want to also know, do you paint uh, plein air? I, every once in a while I do, but I haven't had very many, um, very many experiences doing that. Mostly just like in my backyard, it usually ends up being windy and I get frustrated because the paints dry faster than they do inside. And so I just haven't had very much experience, but it's something that I'm, I have a goal of getting into that. And it would have been really cool for the national parks to have painted them in each national park, but maybe someday. There's many artists that start indoors and get very comfortable with landscape and they have their palette figured out, they have their setup figured out, and then to step outside and paint on location, it helps. Yeah, yeah, I have heard that too. And I am really, really curious to see yeah how I'd respond in a situation like that and I think often I'm like when I'm in these places I'm just exploring and hiking and I don't even think to bring my paints along every once in a while I'll bring a sketchbook but usually I'm snapping photos and then hiking for miles and just getting lost in nature so I need to just bring my paints along next time I go that is on the list of things to do this summer, but yeah, I'll definitely give it a try. So uh, for the magazine on the botanical artist, you can submit your work. And okay. Write, and write an article. I think that'd be pretty neat. That um, would be amazing. Right, so they have like four issues a year and you can send a check for back issues um okay they're in the bronx in new york okay. american society of botanical artists 2900 southern boulevard bronx new york 10458-5126 okay and we'll look, that. <laughs> look for you there that's so cool i will definitely be looking into that thank you so much what other subjects do you like to paint, Emma? Um, I'd say definitely everything nature related is my favorite, just landscapes or um, plants and animals. Birds have been a more recent favorite, uh, like that swallows painting that was showed earlier. Um, lately, a lot of my friends have been getting married, and so my Part of my wedding gift to them has been to paint their wedding bouquets. People are often looking for a way to like preserve that part of the day. 
Um, so I've had a lot of fun painting florals in a very different sense. And that's been really, really cool. It's very detailed and fun to get lost in that. Um, I was definitely, I used to have a horse. I live on a farm. I have lots of animals. So um, I loved drawing and painting horses and chickens and cows and all of that too. I just do that a little less now because that's less, well, lots of horses commissioned, but there's just less of a market for that than there has been for landscapes, it seems. So to some extent, I paint what the art market wants and not necessarily what I love sometimes, but I love it all. So Have you thought about actually doing the bride and groom from a photo? Uh, I have, yeah, you? I've done, I have done one or two portraits of the bride and groom. That was a couple years ago. Um, yeah, I've had, I had one person ask me about doing live painting at their wedding once, and that was several years ago, and I was not, did not feel equipped or brave enough to do it. Now I am like dreaming of doing that for someone's wedding, but yeah, painting the bride and groom would be really cool. And I'm getting married in a couple of months, so maybe I'll practice with my own wedding photos. <laughs> Best wishes. Every happiness. Thank you. Thank <laughs> Emma, how do you keep track of which paint you have and which well? Um, I made a chart once. When I first got all the paints, I like put them all in and then made a little diagram to like remember the names. But since then, I've just kind of remembered which one is which. I had to refresh myself like yesterday, just in case any of you all asked what colors I was using. I figured that'd be a good idea. but. Typically, I, I can remember the name at least uh, somewhat accurately. And I do have them sorted by color family a bit, so that helps. Which color paints are you using is one of our favorite questions. <laughs> it is a fun question. Emma? Yes? Uh, are you a person who looks into it to the level where you know every uh, color pigment number, or are you not that really I haven't, inclined? I haven't reached that level yet. Maybe someday I will. But <laughs> right. Yeah, people are really enjoying this demo. Uh, Susan Little says, I am so impressed with your demo, Emma. I look forward to following your career. Thank you. She's one of yeah. our regulars. Oh, Definitely awesome. Shocking me into, into that centerpiece.
And back over to Facebook, you have people already checking out your, I guess you have a website? I do. I have a pretty simple website that's basically a portfolio of just a few paintings that I've done. And then I have an Etsy shop as well for prints mostly. And Kaiser like says, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say most of my commission work for people is done. People reach out through Instagram or Facebook and then, or it's word of mouth through people that I know that I know through. Yeah. Whole chains of people. So. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Are there uh, any paintings that you wouldn't do as a commission or have refused to do? I don't think I have turned down a commission idea yet. I'm usually open to hearing what people ask me to do. And it's usually something that I've, like, they've seen me paint before, um, either a landscape or a portrait. Um, I tend to shy away from doing like large groups of people like if it's a family picture that's mm. just a lot more um Fun. it's not my specialty so I prefer to stick within like just portrait of one or two people generally speaking or I do people's kids a lot too that's really fun um I don't usually say no to people's ideas but Usually the requests are something that they've seen me paint before too. So I haven't gotten anything mm. too crazy yet. So as soon as I see that, I'll probably get something wild, but. It's always a best strategy to make sure that the person who's coming to you for the painting has a, a rough idea what it is yeah. to do because it's you who's painting it. Yeah, it's going definitely. To yeah. We have Linda Fox says, I'm fascinated with her hand position with the brush. I'm copying her with my pen. Oh, I have had this grip since I was in kindergarten and every teacher I had tried to train it out of me, my mother included, and it never worked, but I guess it's just how it is now. But I've had other people comment on it before, say it's unique. I think it allows me to have a little bit more of a precise grip, but. Actually, your hand position is excellent for visualization on Zoom. Oh. You can, can see what you're doing with the tip of your brush. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. I'm glad. When do you choose to use masking tape? Um, I started doing it a long time, probably like when I started painting with watercolor. Just I used to do it when I used lower quality paper, just because it would help it stay flat. Um, now I like just creating the crisp edges, especially if I'm going to paint all the way to the edges. This is just really basic. I apologize. I meant masking fluid. Oh, masking fluid. Got it. <laughs> um, when do I decide to? Yeah, or you not? said you had that cool uh, tool that you apply the masking fluid. Yeah. Yeah, I have several of these silicone brushes, which is nice because it doesn't jam up the, I don't wreck any of my nice brushes with it. Um, 
I used masking fluid on a couple of the national parks paintings because they were so small. Just like I would mask out like the mountainscape or yeah, the horizon line and then paint like the whole sunset or whatever without having to worry about following the line. Uh, that's the main thing I've used it for. Sometimes I'll use it in, well, in one of the one bride and groom wedding portrait I did, she had a very delicate lace dress. So I used it for that, um, like tracing out the lace. And then I could paint her like skin tone over the masking fluid. So every once in a while, I'll use it for things like that. But often for landscapes like this with all of these trees, I'll just kind of go for it and avoid using masking fluid. Every once in a while, it will create a weird finish on the paper or something. And I don't like how that gets frustrating. So yeah, or I mess something up when I'm taking it off because I get impatient. So if I just avoid it, then <laughs> I'm usually happier, but it can have some really cool effects. And every once in a while, I'm very glad I used it. Alternatively, would you use a, a, a wax resist crayon? I have not tried that, actually, but I should. I could give that a try. Have you tried the Daniel Smith wash or the watercolor ground or um, other, other Daniel Smith products? I haven't, actually. I have only been in the watercolor side of things. I've actually never painted with gouache, but I've wanted to. Um, just, yeah, never gotten around to getting some paint to try it. Um, Emma? Emma, we have about seven minutes left. Okay. Emma, may I ask, um, like, like here in, in your painting, uh, when you have a pass or, uh, or a creek that vanishes in the distance uh, at the horizon, um, do you have a tip how to, uh, how to end this, <laughs> basically? <laughs> I have um, problems when, when something ban vanishes in the distance and um, without a bend or something. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, I guess I found like if the light, well, this one, like the light is shining very golden around the, the vanishing point, which is still in the trees. So it's a little bit different, but I tend to just try and make the horizon spot where the path is as light as possible. And then it's, tends to blend in a little bit more instead of being a more harsh finish. I like it to just kind of fade into the background. So that's usually what I do. Okay, like going into the light. Yeah, 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 it is like that. <laughs> okay, thanks. Yes, of course. Emma. Yes. Uh, you've noted that colour is an important factor in your paintings. So is that uh, to the detriment of tonal value or do you do paintings that uh, emphasise tonal value on occasions? I try to do a bit of both. For a long time, actually, before I got into watercolour, I did a lot of charcoal drawing and so that really pushed me in terms of using just working with shadows and highlights just black and white high contrast um and I still try and get that in my watercolor paintings I would say that sometimes it is a battle between getting the colors fighting for color variety versus um tonal value but I usually try and get both in there Thank you. Yeah. Like for this painting, like 
obviously I'm not going to finish yet, but all of these very dark trees, I would definitely, when I paint it, I make it even more distinct than how it is in the photograph. Um, and I also bring in more colors than show up in the photograph usually too, using more blues and purples for the shadows as opposed to just black. And then um, emphasizing the gold and yellow for light instead of just leaving white space. Do but that's you, something that I've been working on. Do you use lifting as a technique very often? Sometimes, yeah. Um, more so for sky and clouds than anything else. Because I can imagine like a shaft of light coming into. Yeah. Into. Yeah, definitely. I've used that, yeah, more in sunsets and mostly sunsets and skies than in the trees, but I definitely was thinking about it for this painting, like through here. I really like the depth that you have with that cloud uh, in the sky and then these uh, middle ground to the foreground with the trees. It's looking quite nicely. Um, and you get a chance, um, sneak over to Facebook and uh, say, so, say hello to some of these new friends you made. I will. I am so excited. There's some because of your Facebook, uh, Facebook uh, uh, page name, if you will, please. My Facebook is, oh, I think it's my name, Emma Van Devoort. Right. Artist is what it's, I think it says artist at the end. And it has Lewis the Dog Studio in the title. I typically post on Instagram and then have it shared to Facebook also. Um, yeah. I also have another wonderful comment uh, from Buffy. Congratulations on a successful demo. Love how you see your subject then translate it into color. Very cool. Thank you. I think we have a few minutes left, but I know Emma will just continue um, <laughs> and then later share her works on, on socials. I will, definitely. Okay. For the bottom of the hour, Emma, thank you very much. You've been absolutely wonderful. Thank and you. Would, want to wish you and your Mr. Wonderful every happiness, right? Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. So Let one thing Emma that I show her cam um, on the front facing camera. Yes. Thank you. There. Bravo. Uh -huh. yes. nice. He's a lucky guy, right? <laughs> Fantastic. Good show. Thank you, Emma. If you could post the final, that would be that would be great. Love to see the final work. Um, the one thing many, you don't know this, many of you, but the one thing artists ask using the hour that precedes coming on 
is sometimes they're so, a little bit nervous. And I always tell them the same thing. I say, you know, you're going to be in front of watercolors and they're absolutely wonderful people. Um, they're going to ask you really nice questions. They're going to care about you as a person. As you see, Emma, they really do care about you. They're fantastic. Um, so thank you for joining. It's been absolutely wonderful to have you all. Thank you so much. This has been so cool and so special. <laughs> awesome. I hope you can join us again. Special for us, too. Thank you. Happy Thanks, Emma. Thanks, everybody. Um, See you. Bye, Emma. Bye, everybody. Thanks for joining. Bye. Bye. Bye.